All right, guys, we're going to do a little bit more with the Pythagorean theorem. I just didn't want to do it in one long video. So we talked a lot about the Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean triples, and we talked a little bit about the converse, but I do want to do some more examples of those with you. So <clears throat> before I can even know if it is a right triangle, an obtuse triangle, or an acute triangle, um, I need to know, is it even a triangle? Sometimes uh, the lengths of the sides aren't long enough to like complete the triangle or it might be too long and so like you have a little overhang or whatever. So we talked about this actually a couple chapters ago where I have to make sure that the sum, so when I add up, of the shorter sides must be greater than the longest side. <clears throat> now really we had to check all the sums but really it just comes down to as long as the sum of the two shorter sides, which will be the A and the B, is greater than the longest side, which is my potential hypotenuse, C, um, then I'll know that it's actually a triangle. Now, I talked about how to appropriately name a triangle, and I did do it appropriately here, but I don't want B to be the longest side, so I'm going to swap where C and B are just so that when I name this baby A and baby B and baby C, it makes sense over here that C is like the longest. <clears throat> so can the following sets even form a triangle? I just need to pick the two smaller and make sure that they add up to be greater than the largest. So like here, three and six, is that greater than nine? No, actually it's not, no, it's not. <laughs> It's equal, but it has to be greater. I just want to move my face over a little bit. It's bugging me. Okay. <laughs> um, so on the next one, if I take the two smaller, is that greater than the lo uh, longest? And it is because nine is bigger than seven. So yes, that will make a triangle. Now I know it's a triangle. That doesn't tell me if it's a right triangle or not um, yet. So we're going to get to that in just a second. And then lastly here, if I take the two smaller, will that be greater than the largest? And that for sure isn't because that's only five. So not a triangle. So straight up, if they're not even triangles, there's no point in figuring out if it is acute, obtuse, or right because it's not even a triangle. However, if it is a triangle, like this one here, I could then go a step further and to figure out if it's acute, right, or obtuse, we take this guy here and we reverse the order. So 7, 5, 4. I square them all and add the two smaller. And now it's like a question mark. Like what is going to go between them? So we're doing the Pythagorean theorem in reverse. So 7 squared is 49. 5 squared is 25 and 4 squared is 16. And if I add those things up, that's 41. So the symbol that I can put in between is 49 is greater than 41. And since it's greater, that means it's an obtuse triangle. So that's kind of a mini example. Now we're going to go through and do a whole bunch. So if we look at this acute one here first, if I do that C squared, A squared plus B squared, if the potential hypotenuse is smaller then the two legs, then we get an acute triangle. So uh, we talked about in class kind of how to figure out which one's smaller here, like approximating roots. So like square root of three is like 1.7, square root of four is just two, the square root of five will be more than two because it's more than four. So like five is my longest side. Oop. So first I have to see, will the two smaller sides add up to be greater than the longest side? Well, again, the 3 was approximately 1.7, and this is 2. And if I add those things up, that is greater than 2.1-ish, whatever root 5 is, but more than 2 because this is like 3. So definitely more than 2. So it is a triangle. But what kind is it? So to know what kind it is, now I take this, flip it, like reverse it, 
and square all of them. And then it's like, what symbol is going to go in between? So the square root of 5 squared, the square root and square just undo each other. So 5 um, and then 4 plus 3, which is 7. So I can put a less than symbol in between. And when you're less, then you are acute. Because like acute is less than 90, so less than 90 or less than a right triangle is an acute one. And then if we try this one over here, if I do 11 plus 17, that is greater than 22. So yes, it's a triangle. Then I flip it to see what type and I pythagorize it. I just made that up. <laughs> you square them all. So 22 squared, 17 squared, plus 11 squared. Those are big numbers, like 22 squared. I think that's going to be 484. I'm making a guess. We're going to see. Calculator tell me. Oh my gosh, I can't. So 22 squared. Um, 17 squared, I think, is 324. That's my guess. Nope, 289. I don't know why I said 324. That was a dumb guess. And then 11 squared, I know, is 121. So if we add those up, we're going to have, let's see, what are we going to have? Zero at the end. 418? No, 410 can't read my own handwriting. And 484 is greater than 410. And since that one is greater, greater than 90 is obtuse. Now I'm just going to name what type of triangle it is. This is really asking the question, can it form an acute triangle? So this one would be yes, and that one would be no. But I'm just going to be more specific. This is acute, and this is not acute, but obtuse. Which, speaking of obtuse, uh, if we jump down here and try this one now, if I do c squared and it happens to be greater than a squared plus b squared, then we will be obtuse because greater than 90 is obtuse. So if the hypotenuse across from the 90 is bigger, obtuse. So first thing I got to do, though, is make sure that I can actually make a triangle and I need to add up the two smaller and make sure it's greater than the largest. So 5 root 3 is bigger than 5, but is it bigger than 10? And so knowing that the square root of 3 is like 1.7-ish, if I do 1.7 times 5, that's like 5 and a little more. Uh, so like not bigger than 10 because it would need to be like 2 uh, times 5 for it to be 10. And the square root of 3 isn't 2. So the 5 and the 5 root 3 are the smaller sides. And that will be bigger than 10. Because again, this is more than 5. Plus 5 will be more than 10. Because like just 5 and 5 is 10. And this is more than that. So yes, it's a triangle. But what sort of triangle? So to figure out what type of triangle, we reverse it and Pythagorize it. I'm going to use that now. So 10 squared is going to be something to that 5 root 3 squared plus 5 squared. So 10 squared is 100. The 5 squared is easy, 25. And we talked about this in the last video where if I have two numbers being squared, we have to square both. So like 5 squared is 25. And the square root of 3 squared is the square root of 9, which is 3. And they're smashed, so I times them. So 75. So 75 plus 25 is 100. And so because I can put the equal symbol between them, it's a right triangle. So, I mean, if I ask the question, is it obtuse? I would say no, but I can do better than that. It's right. If we try another, if I add the two smaller, is that greater? than the larger, and it for sure is. I mean, that's almost 22 right there, and 12 is a lot more. So yes, it's a triangle. To know what type you want to put the hypotenuse, potential hypotenuse, that biggest one on its own, and then compare it to the two smaller things squared and added up. 
So that 22 squared was 484 again. 12 squared, we got 144. 19 squared, is that what 324? No, it's going to end with a 1. Is it 481? I don't know. No. 19 squared, I don't know. I don't know why I'm guessing. 361, that's weird. 361. So if we add those up now, I have 5, 0, 5. Oh, so 44 is less than 505, and less than 90 is acute. So it's an acute triangle, not an obtuse one. So neither of these were obtuse. We had a right one and an acutie. And so then last but not least, we can try this one over here. If they do, in fact, equal, so if C squared is the same as A squared plus B squared, then we get a right triangle. Okay, so once I know all the sides, if I can boop them all in and they do equal out. Um, but I got to check and see, will it even make a triangle first? So 5, 5, and 5 root 2. Uh, 5 root 2 definitely has to be the longest because um, the square root of 2 is more than 1. And so if I do a number more than 1 times 5, that will be more than 5. So it's bigger than the other 5s. So 5 plus 5, is that bigger than 5 root 2? And this is 10. And like root 2 is just a little bit bigger than 1. So it's not 2. So it's not 10. So yes, it is bigger. So yes, it is a triangle. But is it a right triangle? So to know if it's a right triangle, we put the longest one first and square it. And then the other two together and square them both and add them up. So like over here, that's easy. That's 25 and 25 for 50. But like we did before, if I have two numbers being squared, you're going to want to kind of like square them both. So 5 squared is 25. The square root of something squared is just that number, so 2. And they're smashed together. So we're going to multiply them up for 50. <gasps> And I can put an equal sign between them. So yes, it is a right triangle. Oh, oh my God, typo. Uh, can they form a right triangle? This one, yes, it can. Or it's a right triangle. And then if we try this one here, if I take the two smaller sides, which are easy to identify, will that be greater than the longest side? And it for sure is. So it is a triangle, but what type? Well, if I do 27 squared, how does that compare to 25 squared plus 11 squared? So 27 squared, ugh, don't know, not going to guess. 27 times 27 ends with a 9. <laughs> 729. 25 squared, I'm pretty sure that's 625. Yeah, 625. And then 121. I can already tell they're not going to be equal because the last number is a 6. But let's see. So 4 and then 7. Uh, that one is greater. So we're actually going to have a less than symbol in there, which less than 90 is acute. So it's not right, but it is acute. Alrighty, I'm going to end it there.